Here on BBC One, it's The Big Questions. Yeah, so please do get in touch. Right, have we lost our willpower? Half of us will be obese by 2050. That's what scientists told us this week. It's not just that we eat too much and don't take enough exercise, but they also blame the way we live our modern lives. And also this week, another group of scientists told us we're drinking too much. And uh, they weren't talking about young binge drinkers, but older people who live in the more prosperous parts of the country. So uh, a few guilty looks in the Oxford audience, just checking them out. Have we lost our willpower? Ursula Hirschkorn, you're a journalist. I mean, we are eating ourselves and drinking ourselves into an early grave here. It's all about no self-control, isn't it? Isn't that our choice, though? Isn't it up to us what we do with our lives? Do we need people to tell us that? And is it really just about willpower? I think that it's very unfair to say to people who overeat, it would be so easy for you to stop. If you give up smoking, you never need smoke again. Mm -hmm. If you give up drinking, you never need drink again. If you give up drugs, you never need take drugs again. If you try and lose weight, you have to carry on eating. You have to go to a supermarket, walk past the chocolate. It's like asking a cocaine addict, just take a little bit. Or a drinker, just, just have the one drink and then say no. All things in moderation, surely. But obviously we can't do that. It's obviously not that easy. If it was that easy, then we wouldn't have these statistics coming out. If somebody said to you, right, give up drink, how would that be? <laughs> I think that would be quite difficult too. I'm not good on moderation, it has to be said. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, you know, I, I work full time, I have two young children, those are my pleasures. I think I might kill my two young children if I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anymore. And I think, you know, <laughs> given that choice, I'm going to go for the eating and drinking. Choice is the much. word you keep using there. Choice, uh, Nikki Cooper from the British Heart Foundation. If she or anyone else or me or anyone in this audience or watching at home chooses to have a huge, great pizza and a bottle of wine, one of the, what's the word you use, the treasures of life? The pleasures of life. The pleasures of life. Both. <laughs> Both, frankly. Uh, you know, that's their choice, isn't it? Well, kind of on one level, there is obviously an element of individual choice, but what we're actually finding is it's much, much easier to make the unhealthy choices. It's really hard. You've got to actively think, I want to make the healthy choice. Um, it's much easier for us to have something that's full of fat, full of sugar, full of salt. It's more fun, isn't it? We're well, not here for very long. Well, we're, actually... we're only here <laughs> once, arguably, but there we are. Well, I think there's a lot of pressure telling us it's more fun, whether in reality it is. Um, I mean, children are being marketed with, you know, lots of really kind of fun type foods which actually aren't very good at them you rarely see an advert for carrot sticks so all of our pressures are being said do this do that mm -hmm. and they're working against us I don't actually think that's true I mean I think you know seriously celery is not as nice as chocolate cake I don't <laughs> care how you dress it up it just isn't Ursula that is a controversial statement <laughs> <laughs> come on who's going to argue with me really <laughs> I don't think it's about how you market food you have to accept people enjoy eating certain foods more than they enjoy eating other ones and it's how on earth do you make the meat celery instead of chocolate cake and should you try isn't it up to them I mean you do only live once you've got to die of something I think you have, but I think most of us wouldn't want our children to be having kind of, you know, to be becoming ill health, um, you know, not well. But we're not well talking about older. children here, really. Well, children, it, it starts to have an impact, and obviously the pressures that we're put under as adults, absolutely young people are put under those same pressures. But I think what we have to say is, what can we do to make it easier? Yeah, we want, you know, moderation is great. You know, I'm not going to say no. Moderation no is great. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I think excess is much better. <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly, I mean that you know what you know the the, the pleasure of uh, a massive great burger and chips with a massive dollop of mayonnaise. It's just irresistible, isn't it? And it's sometimes you, your mums, working mums, busy mums. It's irresistible for kids too, especially if you're leading busy lives. It is, but it's um th that's the whole point. They make it too convenient. It's too easy. Who do? Society, consumers, mm. you know, it, it's just too easy for us to go out and buy a 99 pence packet of nuggets or something from the store. I made my kids chicken nuggets the other night from chicken breast. It cost me seven pounds. Mm. So, you know, it's so expensive to do that, but it's the convenience of it to work all day and then go home and cook your kids a good, healthy, balanced diet. And Debbie, there's an imperative on you mm. to give your son really good food yeah. because he was diagnosed with leukemia, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And you found the real difference in uh, in the budget yeah. didn't you it added an extra 75 pounds a week onto my shopping bill to be able to feed him because you know as it worst he was eating seven times a day 
because of the steroids. So he had to have good, fresh, organic food because of bacterial infection. And Bryony, I mean, absolutely, she, she knows the difference. What about when you hear people lecturing? How do you feel? I just think, as a parent, you kind of you aim to do the best for your child that you can. Yeah. And it's time constrictions these days, because the children get home from school, it's four o'clock, my daughter's five, so she needs to go to bed by seven, or yeah. she can't manage the next day. So you have a kind of hour to get food prepared on the table and fed, and then my husband gets in very late from work. So it's essentially cooking two dinners <clears> a day yeah. and working full time. Yeah, and your, your son, you still make that effort? I mean, how is he? He was um, put into remission last week. Oh, so that's fantastic. Mm. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's difficult, uh, Anne Atkins, for mums, isn't it? They, on the one hand, they hear all these scientific studies and they get all this lecturing and so don't eat this, do eat this. But at the same time, they're trying to live their lives. Yeah, yeah. It's very sexist that you say, think it should be the mums doing the cooking. Well, no, I was speaking to two mums there. <laughs> Uh, if I'd been speaking to two dads, of yeah, course, yeah, I would yeah, have... Yeah, sure, you know. right. Yeah, no, it is. And the, 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 the time pressure and the fan money pressure, mm. are, I sympathise totally with everything that you're saying. I think it, 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 in some ways it's easier than we make out because a lot of the damaging things, we, just, we don't have to stock our cupboards with... You know, you don't have to buy sugar. You don't have to buy ketchup. You can just buy fresh food. Obviously, it is more expensive and it does take longer to prepare. But, you know, in this country, we have the most extraordinary attitude to food, that we spend less and less and less on food. We push our farmers further and further and further into a corner where they're really not making any money at all. And food is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing you can buy for your family. Why are we so mean? Why are we so reluctant to spend money buying decent food that has been decently reared? I don't know. It's an extraordinary national characteristic. And, and it's the fact that we don't cook it. Is that a, is that a, a lack of willpower, James O'Brien, that we don't spend the effort... To, to cook decent food. Is that it, something to do with willpower? I mean, there is an argument that, that it is lazy just to stick a ready meal in the microwave, but I think we're being a bit scorched earth about this. You, you can accommodate a certain amount of, of, of poor food in the same way you can accommodate a certain amount of alcohol or even a certain amount of nicotine. It's the idea that, that, that you have no choice between the two that I find quite baffling, this sort of ease of instant gratification. You, you could have an unhealthy meal and then an apple instead of a bag of crisps at the end of it. There's, there's room for balance in everything, and I'm tired of hearing all these excuses, to be honest with you. It's not, for me, a question of ease of access to the junk food it's a, and, and all this talk of choice. Choices are informed by many things, and they're not informed enough by shame anymore. So, so it's not you an absence. should be ashamed about I think if, you're obe if your children are obese, you should be ashamed. Absolutely mm. right. It's child abuse. If, if a child was undernourished, malnourished, they'd be mm. calling social services. If a child is obese, they should be calling social services but again. that encourages bullying it, if you stigmatise people who are overweight. Is, it? It, it's not pleasant. It's not a happy thought to think that a fat kid is going to have his, uh, his burden made heavier by, by, by public abuse. But the solution is not to remove the abuse. The solution is to to remove the fat. Uh, Ursula, what do you think about that? <laughs> I think it's a bit strong to say that it's child abuse because I think in a lot of instances it is a lack of education. I think it's very easy to sort of say everybody knows. Well, they might know in principle, but in practice, it's knowing how to cook fresh ingredients. It's knowing where to buy them. It's knowing what to feed your children. It's having access to places to but give your children me. If you exercise. Are, if you're in a shopping centre or walking down the high street and you see uh, a dad or a mum uh, with, uh, <laughs> with a couple of well, kids... Well, it is and mums. They are very... I think it wasn't sexist. I think it was realistic uh, and to they say are it's over mums. And they are overweight. Do you not... Do you not we, aren't we all a little bit judgmental? Don't we think, my goodness, those parents, what are they doing to those children? I think the thing is, fat people are the last people that you can bash without feeling bad about yourself. You know, because it, you say it's all down to willpower. And I think it isn't. It isn't all down to willpower. And I think it's very unfair to judge parents mm. who maybe don't have the education or the understanding to do anything to help their children. OK, I mean, is anyone in the audience, when they were a child, were they slightly overweight? Did they feel that they were uh, bullied? Were they stigmatised in any way? Do stick your hand up if that's the case. Go on, say, yeah. Well, I think it's also a question of time. These days, I mean, people are pressured so much with job and, and all these things yeah. that, um, like you're saying, it's also a matter of education that people aren't taking the time to understand what they need to eat and how they need to eat and what changes they can make in order to have a healthier diet. Mm.